The data breach report is a study on security failures. It's not about successes. We look at the, the, the causes, the adversaries, the tools, techniques, and procedures they utilize in the course of, of, uh, of data breaches. And we also look at the data types they steal and the errors and omissions on the part of the victims and ultimately boil all of that information down into usable takeaways for the reader, maybe even a recipe for success to keep the reader out of the headlines as the next victim of security breach. So this is our eighth year running of the study this year, and uh, participation in the study has really grown tremendously over uh, you know, the last several years since we started. Originally it was a Verizon production and it encompassed just findings from our own investigations around the globe, but uh, the U.S. Secret Service, uh, the Dutch, the Australians, and many other countries joined into the mix, and now we have more than 70 contributors uh, from around the globe, some of uh, the world's most cyber-capable law enforcement agencies, governments, and commercial entities. And one of the best examples of public-private partnership on intelligence sharing specific to cyber. And, and some of the findings in this year's eighth release are really, really amazing, I think. So, uh, just a, a quick summary of, of some of the things we picked up. Number one, we continued with our research uh, from last year, which I think was very groundbreaking, and we're able to demonstrate that um, uh, about uh, nine out of 10 of every single verifiable data breach and cyber attack over the last 10 years uh, falls into to, to one of nine basic incident patterns. And we can start to find a little bit of meaning in this universe of data that we're analyzing to produce the study. And then furthermore, as we transpose those nine incident patterns over victim industries, we found that roughly 77% of any single industry cyber problems fell into just three of those buckets. And understanding the cyber threats in the real world when you slice through the fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and shows right and show right now today, this is what actually affects certain industries in the real world, that's a very powerful thing to understand. And then you could start to break it out and say, how does pre-attack research happen? Where are the points of entry? Um, how does it, the attack riddle through the victim's network to ultimately find information of value? And then how does that information get out of the network? And the whole point of the study, again, is to break that down. And some of the other fascinating things that we found is upwards of four out of five of all of the intrusions irrespective of victim demographic or sector, four out of five of those intrusions involve the exploitation of stolen, weak, default, or easily guessable credentials. So username and passwords, as you might expect, are a huge problem, but even a bigger problem in the data breach report than most might expect. And simple two-factor authentication mitigates the risk of almost all of that. Again, powerful information. We also study mobility. If you look at smartphones, tablets, uh, bring your own device and, and work from home type implementations and you look at the extent to which mobility really factors into data breaches. And although most people expect that with the uptick in mobility that that uh, especially smartphones play a big role in data breaches today. In fact, it's almost non-existent. And we look back at uh, uh, the presence of malware in wireless devices on the Verizon network and, and found that although there's credible evidence of malware in some numbers on certain types of platforms, almost all of that malware is in fact adnoyance or adware type stuff. And nothing really part and partial to a data breach has been found. It's something like 0.03% of, uh, of real dangerous, malicious type malware being found on, on wireless devices. So not really a big piece of the threat landscape today. Final word I want to say, and this is one of my favorite parts of the study, centers on the cost of a data breach. So we, we look at all of these uh, breaches that we've analyzed over the last several years, and, and, and one of the fascinating aspects of them is most all of these are resulting in uh, a cyber insurance claim. So we look at these claims, the magnitude of those claims, and we can break that back to say uh, how much a single record costs the victims, and we can provide an average than a lower and an upper range in that limit. So an organization now can look and say, well, wait a second, we're going to be on the higher end of that because of the type of information we have and get a real firm metric on what a typical data breach will cost them versus anybody else in their sector or elsewhere in the world. And I think that'll drive decision making around security and security spending more than anything else.